Hey there, Crystal Covington, founder of Women of Denver, and I'm here chatting with Nicole Trigg Steinbeck, one of our members who is a coaching consultant supporting women in tech careers. Yeah. So I'm excited to chat with you today and learn a little bit about what's going on in your world. So to get us started, why don't you tell everybody where you came from and how you got into this pathway? Okay, yeah, sure. So um, my career in technology took me to over 25 countries. Um, at the end of my corporate phase, or my, maybe my first corporate phase, who knows how life continues to go, um, I was a senior global director of change and communication. And even at the, towards the end of that phase, I was still the only woman in the room in a major technology company far too often, or I was the only woman that had financial or personal responsibility. And I thought, man, oh, this has got to be a little different. We got to make some significant change. And one of the things I had been doing inside of my role is coaching up and coming leaders. And I saw the power for myself, but also for the people that I was coaching, what this could do. So I stepped into my own business a year ago. I do some change management consulting because I love hairy, complicated, strange problems. Um, but then with women in technology, I want to make sure that technology becomes far more inclusive all over the world so that more profiles are designing, are developing, are rolling out, implementing, governing, so service, all of the spines of our industries. Because if we think about it, I mean, look at this, right? Especially now, we know that all industries are tech industries. They're tech-based <laughs> industries, right? And yes. so why is there such a limited profile actually making these decisions, right? And so for first, the first step is women in technology, just to make sure we're, we're lifting all boats, but it's actually much, much bigger than that. And that's why I collaborate with a lot of people. Nice, yeah, collaboration helps because you know you have this mission, you're one person. Oh, yeah. And when you, when you yeah. connect with other people and link up on the same thing, you can make a bigger impact. And, um, mm -hmm. and that's just, that's part of what we, you know, always like to promote as, you know, women of, Denver and just in, in different things that I'm part of, we're always talking about that just to kind of remind each other of the value of being that supportive force for one, one, one another. And I like the fact that you kind of mentioned that, you know, I forget how, the, what the saying is, but lifts all boats. Uh, uh, yeah. When the water rises, we lift all boats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love that one. Yeah. Because it's, it's true. And you know, when, when you and I are having these conversations and we're opening the doors for ourselves, we're actually opening the doors wider for everyone behind us, you know? Mm -hmm. And I look at my son and I look at my daughter and they are so incredibly privileged, right? They have this global world because their dad is German. They're getting yeah. a great education. You know, they have me as their mom. So they're constantly getting pushed along, you know? <laughs> but, but that's just not true for everyone, right? Yeah. It's just not true. And, you know, I was born in Appalachia to a single mom and there were a lot of obstacles that didn't need to be there. And so now for this generation, I just want to help remove as many obstacles as I can by servicing women and creating those ripples that go out throughout the world. Love it. Yeah. So tell me about, you know, what's going on that you're hearing? What are you paying attention to? What are you seeing that is, um, new and interesting in the world of tech careers? Oh my gosh, okay, so the first thing is, is that a lot of people, they instantly think Silicon Valley. And I just yeah. wanna take a moment and I want to totally dispel that, right? And so um, Dana, who already did a video, she talks a little bit about like, what is a STEAM career, right? And she mentioned some really cool examples. Yeah. But it's also true for technology. So think about Fashion Week. The largest team in Fashion Week is tech. Or think about concerts. How are concerts being done? They, they all yeah. run on tech. Right. Yeah. And so there's so many opportunities and so much growth in this space from robotics and programming the robotics all the way to running those massive um, 
events that are out there and there's such a need for that bridge. And so in my career, I've actually coded very, very little. I've done some implementation work, but that's it. The rest of the mm -hmm. time I was that bridge. So understanding enough and understanding enough so that the technology could be used to make things better which is a little bit now the negative side of what's going on in the industry. So we have COVID, we're at home, you and I are parents, right? Yep. So we have millions of parents and particularly in the US where quarantine has been going on the longest and there's the most impact. Um, it's impacting women three times as much as men. So whether that is burnout from having all of these responsibilities and i don't know if, if you have elder care i don't but elder care is also something that is very common you know for yeah. women in their 50s you know their, their kids are finally in college and here comes a parent or a stepmom right and um so that's a challenge and then inside of the jobs right tech is booming tech is exploding people demand it right we need a lot more stability we need a lot more functionality etc well who's getting the promotions and who's taking the work i'll tell you that it's mostly the male identities that are getting these promotions and moving up and that work from the position that they've exited it tends to go on to women and there's actually some amazing research that's underway right now by um, the European Commission on Technology, but also Anita B that's showing the weight on our shoulders. And in the United States, it's particularly challenging. So in a lot of places in the world, you know, there is a childcare infrastructure, there's a paid time off infrastructure, the, the countries, even in many, many, many places in Africa and Asia and South America that have been supporting their civilians and their citizens, right? And that's just not the case here. And so people are really in the situation of, wow, my industry is booming and there's so much opportunity and I get to do this really cool stuff, but I am all by myself doing this care and more is coming back on to me. Oh my goodness. So it's a tough time right now. And it's just another example of why the inclusion and the diversity and everything around that in tech is so critically important. We cannot have two core identities making global decisions about how tech works. It's just not working. It's going to fail us. Yeah, definitely, especially in those leadership areas where if people understand what's going on in other spaces of other households, different people's lives, you know, if everybody in leadership is male, they don't even understand what they should be attentive to, to yeah. supporting their teams, especially right now. I had a call recently with someone who she's, she's an entrepreneur in technology, but her clients have been frustrated with her because she's a little slower getting things in. She's, you know, not on the same pace and they will say to her, Oh, I, I totally understand that your kids are at home. I get it. Oh, don't worry about anything. But then they're like, Hey, Hey. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's very, it's a challenge to be in that position of, you know, people don't necessarily get it because she does feel like she says, none of them have children. None of them are, you know, in the responsible in the care responsibility mm -hmm. position at this moment. So they don't see it. <laughs> okay. Um, Okay. And so for people in those leadership positions to get it, it means a lot. And to be able to create, you know, opportunities that work for that um, during this moment, because it might last another year. So they got to be, you know, absolutely. you want to keep women in these roles. They don't, we don't want them pulling out right now. <laughs> yes. And it's not just the gender and the parenting, right? So we mentioned um, the age of care. Also, like religious holidays are really valuable. How mm -hmm. are you doing your rollout? And I will tell you, I planned a rollout about 13, yeah, 13 years ago during Ramadan, a global rollout. Because there was nobody in this global team that was in a position of power and was a practicing Muslim. I mean, it's just yeah. all of these things. That's why we need so many different identities inside of all decisions. Yeah. Yeah. I only learned about that holiday because my um, 
someone in my life has a, an employee on their team that that um, celebrates that holiday and he actually does he recognizes it each year he has it on his calendar and he knows she will not be available and i need to make sure that i don't have a lot of things on her during that time so there's a lot of things to be aware of with teams to be inclusive yeah. absolutely absolutely so tell me about some of the recent things that you've accomplished brag a little bit tell me what's new with you okay um <laughs> that's exciting so um i oh wow oh my goodness i like coach women to do this and now i'm freezing because I'm, I'm instantly i'm instantly thinking about what my awesome clients have been doing you know it's like nailed the promotion got the big raise you know that's um, an accomplishment for you too it is it yeah. is it is yeah it's great so um many of my clients are really they're really stepping into their power in this moment um i know that for myself as soon as my kids restarted school i like banged through my to-do list from March, you know, it was like March, April, May in three days. And I'm like, why does this usually take so long? Mm -hmm. um, no, but some things that I'm really, really excited about is that um, I'm, I'm being interviewed for Thrive, which is super exciting. I'm working on that right now. What's Thrive? Thrive is, um, so the Authority Magazine and Thrive, and it's all connected somehow to the HuffPost. Oh, okay. I'm able to describe that in much more detail, but I can't. Oh, I'm Thrive Global. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm so excited <laughs> I know what that is. That. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I'm pretty excited about that. And then um, I also have been connected to a potential mentor, and I can't talk about it yet. Aww. But there's somebody who has been doing this work globally for a long time and is willing to support me as I build the global aspect. So I have clients all over the world right now. Um, and in total, my clients have come from a little over 30 countries. Wow. But during the quarantine, it's been a bit challenging, right? And so this is somebody who um, understands the legalities, understands the technology, and could be very, very exciting. So I'm really happy about that. And then for STEM Reimagined, um, I got to be a part of a global team that did the first ever online summit and the stories and the questions and the connections that happened there were just really inspiring. Because um, the challenges that we're facing are, of course, there are some differences regionally or um, you know, nationally or religiously or et cetera, but most of the time there's connection points and there's a shared, shared desire, but also shared pain, right? Mm -hmm. And then last but not least, um, Anita B is a massive organization for women in technology. And um, I was their first verified career coach for oh. their members, which feels so amazing because there's been times when I wanted to just like throw down the tech mantle and stomp off and a huff. Um, and Anita B really helped in our, the, um, Grace Hopper celebration is just around the corner. It's going to be virtually this year. And I have the opportunity to play a big role by mentoring people and coaching people each day as part of their ticket. And I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Yeah. You're doing so many awesome, awesome things. Nice. And I survived six months. <laughs> quarantine this is the longest i've been in one country since i turned 19. so oh, wow itchy. i'm like get out of here <laughs> yeah i just started a little travel fund because i'm like after this is over there's going to be a whole list of places i need to go and i'm going to need a lot of money to go there <laughs> yeah. yeah so i'm like i'm saving <laughs> yeah i mm, i hear you mm. yeah so I've enjoyed having you a part of Women of Denver and the way that you have been supportive to other people. You come with amazing ideas. Um, what have you taken away from being a part of the group? Oh my gosh. Okay. So um, because I built my career in Europe and then when I moved to Denver about four years ago, 
I continued to travel. I had my job with the same company I'd been with in, in Germany. And so I didn't really know. Okay, so what I say is I didn't even know where Wadsworth is and I live in Golden. <laughs> People would be like, I'm off Wadsworth and no, no, no. And I would say, could you send me the exact address? Yeah. <laughs> Um, and so when I decided to leave the company, I really, I really felt very scared. I knew that I could build my own company. I knew I had the skills and I had the connections, but I was very scared of being alone. And what has been amazing about Women in Denver, and I actually only got to go to two in-person events. The rest of it has been all online, either because I was traveling or because the quarantine happened or whatever. But these um, connections that people offered me, as well as the opportunities that you've made possible, like I feel confident that I know wonderful professionals in Denver. And it happened in such a short period of time. I mean, it's been a little over a year. So it's been amazing. And I'm, I'm really grateful for those connections. And you really attract women who are ready to support other women. And that's exactly the type of people I want to be engaged with. Awesome. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing that. And thank you so much for taking your time to talk with me and let me show you off to our <laughs> social media audience. <laughs> I'm so grateful you put the group together. You just do a great job. If you're not a member, be a member. Come to the event. Amazing. Thank you so much. Tell people how they can keep in touch with you. Oh, yeah, of course. So my website is tricksteinbachand.com. And then LinkedIn is my place to be. So LinkedIn is so much fun for me. Um, there's a lot of chatter that happens. And it's just a great place to share insight, but also to see some of the insight that's happening around the world. So I'm Nicole Trick Steinbach on LinkedIn as well. Okay, and I will post a link to both. All right, have a great rest of your day. You too, Crystal, and everybody. Bye. Bye.